All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So I first want to welcome you all. Thank you for joining us today. As I was just reading through the chat, it does look like we have friends joining us from all over the globe. So regardless of what time zone you're in, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. We're just thrilled that you are taking the time to join us here today. Uh, so to give you a quick overview of what we have in store for you for the next hour, Today, I am joined by one of our colleagues, Gwendolyn McDay, who comes to us from the McNulty Leadership Program. And she is going to be spending the hour talking you through all that the McNulty Program has to offer. But this is a part of a series that we are doing that highlights our advising support network. So for those of you who have joined us for previous events, whether they have been virtual over the past year, or you were previously able to join us on campus for one of our campus visits or our specialty visit days, or maybe we came to you back when we were able to travel, you have most likely already heard about our advising support network as it is something that we definitely feel differentiates the Wharton program from some of the other MBA programs. Given that within Wharton, you have a set of four advisors from across those four main offices in Wharton. So when you get to campus and preterm in early August, you will be assigned these advisors who will walk through the entire program with you, talk about goal setting, talk about what you would like from your academics, from your career, from your personal life. Uh, so from all of those main buckets to help tailor your time here, we're a very flexible, personalized program. So you'll have someone from the Office of Student Life, from Career Management, from the McNulty Leadership Program, as well as from the academic advising working with you. So within this series, throughout the month of May, we've been hosting these webinars every Wednesday. So you may have already tuned in and heard from Megan Gotti, who is from the Office of Student Life. Last week, we were joined by Colleen France from MBA Career Management. Today, we'll hear from Gwendolyn McDay from McNulty Leadership Program. And then next week to close out our program, we will hear from another colleague, Lisa Rudy, who will talk through the academic side of things. So all of these webinars are being recorded and they will be added to our website uh, once the entire series is complete. So if you need to go back and see any of these, they will be added to the website uh, by the end of May, early June. So I'm gonna turn things over now to Gwendolyn who, like I said, comes to us as one of the directors of the McNulty Leadership Program. But not only that, she is also a proud Wharton alum from the class of 2013. So she also has some firsthand knowledge of what it's like to be a student at Wharton. So I'm very pleased to turn things over. Gwendolyn, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jen. And it is just an honor to be with all of you and have the opportunity to answer your questions and talk a little bit about how Wharton instills leadership. So I've got about 25 or so slides, but I'm gonna break it up with some activities where um, we're gonna do some breakout rooms and you're gonna interact with each other. Um, so the objectives for this session, and as Jen mentioned, we're gonna go about an hour. The first is to understand how Wharton instills leadership, how we approach um, leadership education. The second is to reflect on your personal leadership goals as you're considering an MBA. You're at an interesting point where you're thinking about this next step, what's right for you, what school is right for you. And I'd like you to take a moment, and we'll do this together, to kind of ground yourself a little bit. Because my experience uh, coming to business school, very often folks seem to think, ah, I'm not exactly sure if I'm on the right path in my life. Maybe I know I want to pivot. Maybe I'm thinking about it. Maybe I just, I know I need to take a break and do some reflection. I'm going to do that during business school. Business school is actually, especially Wharton, incredibly busy. And if you don't kind of think about your goals ahead of time, sometimes those two years can go by so quickly. You're like, wait, I did all this amazing stuff. What does it add up to? Where did I actually want to land? So helping to think through, carve out some time to be intentional, to think about your goals. And we're going to do it within the realm of leadership. And as Jen mentioned, you have your advising support network here at Wharton that actually will help you do that across all four domains um, of the student experience. But we're just going to kind of give you a little taste 
of the leadership approach and, and be responsive to some of your early thinking about your leadership goals. Um, and so then step three, kind of objective three, based on those goals, based on these early thinkings that you'll have a chance to discuss, um, we'll, we'll take you through the activities and the programs that are offered at Wharton within the McNulty Leadership Program. We'll talk a little bit about some of the broader opportunities for leadership that are beyond simply the McNulty Leadership Program. And then you'll be able to ask questions that kind of start to close that gap between your goal and what might help you achieve it. So that's the agenda for today. So in pursuit of our first objective, how does Wharton instill leadership? We do it in an evidence-based way. We're really gifted here at Wharton to have the best cutting edge faculty when it comes to organizational dynamics, organizational um, like psychological and behavior and research. Thinking about how people interact as leaders individually, in teams, good followership. We have an incredible faculty that is on the leading edge of the research in this area. And then the McNulty Leadership Program takes that research and turns it into experiential learning opportunities because leadership is really hard to actually do, right? You can sit in a class and you can say, okay, so here's the things that I'm supposed to do as a leader. Here's what the research shows are really gonna be most effective in terms of motivating folks, in terms of tapping into my employees' best selves and bringing their best work to the team. Here's how we get a high performance output. Here's how we address problems and manage conflict and address change. And it all makes sense. And then there comes that moment when everyone's looking at you. And you think, oh my gosh, do I remember what I'm supposed to do? And actually working through it and perhaps feeling lonely. Leadership is often lonely. You're leading in a direction where perhaps other people you're hoping they're going to follow you. But we talk about that in McNulty Leadership Program. And we make sure that we're using evidence to support you and then give you an opportunity to test it and practice and build that leadership muscle so that when you graduate from the Wharton School of Business, you already have a couple of iterations under your belt of how you're gonna lead. You have that confidence, you have a little extra that puts you in that place of when all eyes are on you and you're the one who wants to step into that leadership space, you've already done it and you know where your strengths are and you know where you need compliments and team members to step in and support you and you're ready to go. So we talk about a student of leadership, there's the knowing, that's the, the academic side, that's the research, that's the literature. Then the stretch experiences, the experiential learning that we offer through the Melty Leadership Program, and then feedback and coaching. So we try to make sure that our students are put together in a safe environment where they can test out these leadership practices and then get immediate feedback, whether it's through surveys, whether it's through guided facilitation, executive coaching, after action reviews with the team, getting feedback. We, I run a program specifically where I survey the entire first year class about the performance of second years who decided that they wanted to have an experience coaching those first year learning teams. So if you come to Wharton, you'll have the ability to give feedback on the very students that are taking you through things. And then later as a second year student, have the opportunity to get that amount of feedback immediately to learn and grow with. So all of this is within a framework called the Kolb cycle of experiential learning. So you and I, and we all, have about 20,000 experiences a day. That's a lot. How many do you think you learn from? It's easy to imagine like, oh, I'm always learning. I'm an open-minded person. I'm trying to think about what works. I definitely do critical thinking. I know personally, I'm one of those people that repeats things over in my head ad nauseum, just like, what did I do wrong? How could I do better? But is that actually learning? That might be the first step of the process, the reflective observing piece, I might have that down, but am I actually taking that information and then making concrete changes in my behavior to test out other approaches than what I did that first time? So again, you do something that, that that's that concrete experience at the top. You might reflect upon it. Did it work out for me? Did it not work out for me? Maybe I asked some people's opinions. Did, I, did what I did, did it come across well? Did you understand what I was intending? 
Did we actually stick the landing? And then you do some abstract conceptualization. Well, let me think. I've learned something in a management class about how teams really benefit from spending some time thinking about norms. And I attempted to lead my team through a session about norms. Mm, I'm trying to reflect. I've asked them for some feedback. It turns out that it wasn't that effective. It turns out that people aren't really sure what I was talking about, didn't work out. So then active experimentation, I'm going to plan to do it again. The next time I have that opportunity, I'm going to try something different. That brings us back up to that concrete experience again, and you just keep going around and around. And so that's a part of leadership that's interesting is you're never done. You're never complete. But we at the Wharton School feel it's so important to instill that practice and that comfort in this process that you will just grow and continue to become ever more a powerhouse of confident leadership and that you'll have these kind of practices to fall back upon. Okay, so the next thing um, we're gonna just, before we break out into rooms, I wanna ground us a little bit on the Wharton standards of peer engagement. So one of the first things you guys do, and this is like a treasured time, a memory of, of when I was a student, is when MBA students first arrive, there's a month of what we call preterm, which is kind of like onboarding. And part of that is really developing the culture and the knowledge of how you show up at Wharton, what are the expectations, how do you interact, what all is available. We try to set that table before classes kind of formally really kick off. One of the things we try to share and instill again is this culture throughout the, the class and throughout Huntsman Hall um, of these kind of general rules of peer engagement. So when I put you in breakout groups, you'll be with two or three other prospective students and you'll be asked to share things with one another. And I very much encourage you to be as vulnerable and open as you feel comfortable today. And to do, to offer this grace to whoever you turn out to be in a room with. So assume good intentions, forgive people for their mistakes. If someone says something that triggers you or that you might find offensive or they just find like, really, that's weird. Just assume, you know what? Maybe they have some education to do in a different point. Maybe they're having an off day. Give them the benefit of the doubt. We're all here to learn together. Lean into discomfort and recognize the difference between a confrontation and a conversation. We're probably not gonna get into anything controversial today, so don't even worry about that. These are pretty light questions. But, you know, in a place where you may feel a little uncomfortable, especially about your own goals and self-awareness, lean into that. Follow that mm, discomfort because there's something there. That is your body telling you, you have an opportunity to open a little bit, allow a little space, give a little attention to that learning opportunity. Let people speak their truth, number three, and believe them when they speak it. Everything you hear today, just let it wash over you. That's the perspective of the other person and just honor that for that. And that's all it needs to be. They don't have to, you don't have to be convinced. You don't have to um, take it further than just honoring the truth that someone else is sharing with you. Don't yuck my yum. I might love accounting. It may be the thing that makes me a baller. You may not like accounting. Totally cool. Don't yuck my yum. Um, and every one of us has something to contribute. Every one of us has something to learn. Okay. So with that foundation, what I'd like to do now, we'll take maybe, mm -hmm, let's do like a good, a good 10 minutes actually. Um, you'll be in breakout rooms and you're going to do two things. First, introduce yourself. So whoever you're with, everyone gets to say their name and um, kind of what, where they're coming from, even though we put it in the chat, it's nice to just share where you are in the world. Then think of an example of a time where you saw either great leadership or leadership that was terrible. So just when I said that question, hopefully one story popped up either way in your mind. And as long as you don't feel too weird about sharing that with people you don't know, in a couple of minutes, share that story out loud. Either, oh my gosh, I remember this time where someone just like, you know, knocked it out of the park when it came to leadership or, oh my gosh, I've had a job experience where, ooh, it was, you know, the leadership was not there. So you're gonna share that. And then the second part, is to think about a leadership goal 
that is informed by the story you just told. That story popped to your mind because it meant something to me. It meant something to you. There was a moment that that leadership, either good or bad, stood out in a way that it impacted you. That means there's an opportunity there. There's something about that story that if you unpack it a little bit, might tell you about a goal that you actually have that you haven't made conscious yet. So if you have a moment where you recognize leadership, and you thought that is what a leader is to me, that might give you a sense of, oh, I wanna be like that person. Well, what would my goal be in terms of how could I be like that person? Were they speaking in a motivational way? Did they captivate a room? Did they motivate a bunch of people to do something really hard? Maybe that's something you wanna learn. On the flip side, Maybe the story that popped to your head is, I worked for a company where there was no leadership. There was no clear decision-making. We didn't really know what was going on. So that might give you a goal of, hey, I really wanna develop my decision-making skills because I've seen what happens when no one has that in a team. Any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat on the assignment. Okay, I'm gonna open up the rooms. Uh, there'll be a little warning at the top of the screen when I'm gonna bring you guys back. Um, and just make sure you leave enough time for either both people to have a chance to speak or if there's a third person in your room that you're sharing the time. Thanks so much, let's get to know each other a little bit. Some folks, I'm just still assigning you to your rooms. And it's nice if you are on mute to um, unmute your video once you get into your room, just so you have a chance to really get to see face-to-face -face the folks who are with you. Thanks for your patience for those who are waiting to get their room. Okay. Everyone should have a room assignment. Let me know if you're, I see some folks haven't left yet. So there's a yeah, separate yeah. box if you haven't used Zoom that will come up that'll invite you to a room. Yeah, go um, ahead. Don't I was alone in my room, so I came back. Um, I was in 17. I don't know if there's someone there now, but. Okay, let me put you in room four. Oh. Okay, thanks. Hold on one second. Hi, Gwendolyn. Um, I was also alone in my room. I think it was 53. Um, there's some folks I think who are here who maybe haven't gone to a room. So then, and there's someone all by themselves. Uh, yeah, I was in a breakout room by myself, so I'm back. <laughs> no, I'm glad you came back. Thanks so much. Um, oh, that's what happened to me as well. I messaged in the chat about being alone. All Hi. by yourself. Well, let's see, we'll get you guys paired up right here. Um, room 32 needs another person. Uh, hi, actually, uh, I was just plugging my headphones. Can you please uh, repeat the requirements? Sure. So you're going to get into a room and introduce yourself um, uh -huh. to whoever is in the room with you and then answer two mm -hmm. questions. One, a time that you witnessed leadership that was really compelling or really terrible um, mm -hmm. and just share that story with each other and then a time uh, and then the second question is based on that is there a goal um, a leadership goal that kind of occurs to you because of that so everyone who's still 
um, not in a room. If you could go back into the room where you were first invited as someone may be waiting for you there. I'm getting messages in the chat. And if you're still in an empty room, then please come back here. Uh, I tried twice. I was alone twice. Uh, that's why I came back. Awesome. No, thank you for letting me know. Okay. Yeah. Your room has three people who've not joined. Uh, Matt. Oh, one person joined. In, try it one more time. All right. And Matt, you're also in the same room there. If you want to go back into room 64. Perfect. Um, let's see. And the folks who are on mute, um, is anyone else trying to get in the room, hey. but it's having trouble? Um, I joined a little late, so I'm not entirely sure how, how to get into the room. Okay. Um, oh yes, perfect. I'm going to add you to room seven and I'm gonna add Cassidy there as well. Looks like everyone else should be assigned though. Yeah, hi, I didn't have anyone in my room either. So I kind of left. <laughs> so, yeah, which room were you in? What number was it? I was in 44. 44. <laughs> ah, yes, your person, there's uh, Jeffrey is there now. Oh, okay. I was also headed to, I think it was 54 and lost connection there. <laughs> Okay. And so I just kind of rejoined it again. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I'm going to put you in a different room. Um, Perfect. Say the person who was going to be matched with you went into a different space. Um, All right. So now, now you should be ha have an option. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Uh, Angel, Raphael, Regina, any issues? How can we help? Um, I had an issue. I was in room eight, but my partner, I think, left, so. Ah, yes, indeed. Okay, let me find a spot for you. Perfect. You're going to head to room 37. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, Gwen. This is Sahil. Uh, I was in uh, room nine and uh, it was empty. Indeed. Um, I, oh, and I just put you in room eight, but don't go there because there's no one else there either. That person just dropped. All right. Hold on one second. Let me make sure there's a space where there's someone to chat with. Hi, I'm still looking for a room as well. Awesome. Okay, so let's put you guys together. How about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna stay in room, we're all gonna go to room eight. All right, perfect.
Daniel and uh, Agis. So you might be confused. You guys, I think, just joined. Everyone is in breakout rooms doing a little reflection. And we're inviting you to think about a leadership goal that you have. So when you're thinking about your MBA, perhaps you've seen some examples in your careers thus far of a, you know, of great leadership and probably not so great leadership, probably a number of examples pop to mind. But if there's one in particular, um, what does that tell you about a leadership goal that you might take on for yourself? What is something you want to learn so that you can either be that leader that you saw do so such great things or avoid being the kind of leader that you saw do the not so great things? We've got two minutes left. I'm going to broadcast that to everyone. So I'm curious, I can see um, that a couple of folks have come back from their discussion. So is there anyone who um, would share their um, leadership goal so far? You can feel free to drop it in the chat too. Oh, it happened so fast. Welcome back. Thanks again for your patience on the uh, those of folks who were coming and going in between rooms, but hopefully you had a moment of just getting to know a potential future classmate and then also telling hopefully a uh, lighthearted, hopefully didn't feel too heavy at this point, hopefully nothing was too raw of like a time you've seen leadership not work out or maybe you were refreshed to imagine and remember, recall a time where you saw a great leader in action and then based on that story, maybe a learning leadership goal that you have. So um, if you feel comfortable uh, and you wanna drop in, your, in the chat your leadership goal, and as we move through the rest of the presentation, um, we'll talk about the different programs at McNulty and what might tie to some of your goals. So one way to kind of think about what McNulty Leadership Program offers is in terms of the length of time that you would engage in with, with our office, with the leadership program. So you may come to Wharton and be very specific about the kinds of experiences you wanna have. You may not, but sometimes folks are very clear that listen, they really want, you know, they're pivoting from a different industry. They really wanna be focusing on the finance piece. And that might be more of a priority, for example, than really focusing on leadership. Or there may be someone who's had some prior management experience, you've had some reports, you realize the challenges. And so you're more interested perhaps on how can you double down on leadership and really invest in more time in that area um, because you've had a taste of it so far and you really want to do more. So that's kind of how we think about um, the ways you might engage with our office and a way to kind of make sense of the vast number of programs that we offer. So we're gonna kind of bucket things into things that are shorter range leadership opportunities with our office. Um, something that you could do that would last anywhere from a half day workshop to kind of a three day um, kind of intensive. So that's one option um, because there's so much to do at Wharton. It's helpful to have a sense of like how you would manage you know, a leadership learning opportunity in with everything else that you can learn when you're at Wharton. There's mid-range, so you might be able to commit a full week, say your spring break or a semester, obviously not every single day. And we're co-curricular, so there's nothing that we do that's credit bearing, but that could complement what you're doing um, over the course of a semester, especially if you were taking up a leadership activity, say with a club, like if you were running for a club president or a vice president, or if you're going to run a conference, and some leader uh, leadership support that would complement you and, and to really help hold that space for you to be reflective and to try new, um, to try out in their club experience some of the things you're learning over the course of that semester. 
And then finally, for those of you who, again, really want to double down on leadership, we have experiences that are longer range. And typically the way those work um, is that, you know, in your first year you would apply, they're more selective, um, and then you have a train period of training. And then usually in your second year, that's when you're really doing the leadership. And so the whole piece is, you know, multiple lengths encompassing parts of your first and second year. Um, so first, in terms of like the shorter term things, every Wharton student will experience the learning team experience. You've heard about them, you're excited about the idea of being in a learning team, a group of five to six people, which is what the research says is the optimal team size, that you'll be doing core classes with, and you'll go through this learning team experience when you first arrive as part of that preterm onboarding period I spoke about, where you meet your learning team and go through an accelerated team formation process. And it's both fun and hard and fascinating. And it's there's two ways you can go through it. You can go through it and like just enjoying it and letting it wash over you. Or you can also go through it at the meta level and pay attention to why are they doing this particular activity with us at this time? Why is our team being asked for this thing at this point and realize you're being moved along a model that is research backed of how you accelerate a team in terms of forming as a true team, not just a group of random people who divide and conquer, but a team where your strengths and weaknesses and abilities and learning goals are all integrated. That same process is one you can use with your teams. Um, so that is just an awesome experience. And everyone will get to go through that. You form as that team very quickly. So usually the team formation process happens over time and work, obviously, um, or even your family team. You've got a lifetime to learn how to work well together. Um, but we do it really quickly in two or three days because then you work with that term, that team in Management 610, which is our fundamentals, foundations of teamwork and leadership. I can't go into too much about this class. It is one of a kind. We've been asked by executive education and, and lots of other companies, will Wharton offer this experience to anyone but MBA students? And the answer is no. It is an incredible opportunity um, and you wanna be a good, strong team going into it because then it makes you work and it work well together. Oh. So People Lab is another shorter term opportunity, but it really actually helps you kind of get a sense of what you wanna do and where you have gaps. So we're big on assessment at Wharton. This is an in, one of the things you can do as soon as you arrive as a first year student, once classes have kicked off and you've gotten through preterm, to go into the People Lab platform and take a number of different assessments, including a 360 degree feedback opportunity where you can email former employees, you can have members of your learning team fill it out. Um, there's tests on grit, coachability, um, generosity. Get a bunch of feedback from different people as well as rating yourself to see where am I on really key characteristics of leadership and where does that suggest that you might need to grow or that you might want to grow? So we kind of ground you in self-awareness and give you some data to support that. And then there's other things in that platform that are tools to support your learning. So you may say, oh, wow, I'm not where I thought I would be when it comes to grit. I thought I was really resilient, but it looks like that's actually the way I think my mindset isn't very resilient. What do I do now? And there's articles and research and support just in the platform to get you started down that path. Boop. So then what do you do with that? One of the ways kind of in a one-on-one -on -one setting that you can begin to get support for your goals is our executive coaching and feedback program. And there's many different ways that you can interact with executive coaching at Wharton, but this particular one involves an executive coach either working with you and a team of first years. So in your first year, you would be in peer coaching where each person might have an individual goal and you're working as a group with an executive coach that's helping you learn how to coach one another. And so you're kind of, maybe you set a goal and you share it with your group members. And then the executive coach helps you coach one another as you work through achieving that goal. Then in your second year, you have the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with a coach. 
And that's a wonderful place where you can take that feedback you got from the Wharton 360 degree feedback process. You can do that both when you first arrive and then also from your summer internship and really drill down with an executive coach on, okay, here's my knowledge gaps. Here's where I'm really struggling to be effective. And that coach will help you design experiments and then hold you accountable for coming back and reporting and saying like, ooh, I was supposed to work on this and I tried it here and this is what I observe. And they'll ask you questions and deepen your ability to get to where you wanna go. Again, still within the shorter term um, framework, Leadership workshops. There's about six offered per semester. The topics vary. You can see a couple of different topics that comes up, but this can vary in terms of length from a half day, like four hours um, of a particular topic that might interest you to um, you know, a full day where you might even go somewhere, be off site to enrich your leadership skills. Um, so it's a really fun way to kind of fit in or be really tactical. If there's a one particular element of leadership that you really wanna work on, like emotional intelligence, for example, you could say, listen, I'm just gonna sign up for that workshop. That's the place that I wanna get um, the most out of my leadership. Now we're transitioning from the shorter term to that mid range. P3, purpose, passion, principles, is a really wonderful way to get to know other people at Wharton as well as yourself. And almost you learn more about yourself in contrast to the very different perspectives of people who are going through the same experience. So you go through P3, there's both readings and then structured conversations, sometimes with a facilitator, sometimes not, where you start to think about what does happiness mean to me? What is success? What is my vision of success? Maybe I've never actually taken the time to think about that. Um, sorry, was that a question? All good, okay. Um, how do I spend my time? And then based on my definition of happiness and success, what would it look like if I really was spending my time in the ways that made me happiest and felt most successful? And then let's look at those two pie charts and figure out what needs to change. And so those are conversations over the course of a semester that you have with a small group to deepen your, your own knowledge and then also really get to deepen your knowledge and connection with some of your other Wharton classmates. I love P3. Um, in fact, my P3 group, I was in class of 2013, so a while ago. We are still in touch. We have retreats twice a year. Um, and you know, every team is different, obviously, but um, sometimes these friendships last a lifetime. These are the folks that I turn to who hold me accountable, who remember my initial goals, who are like, Hey, Gwendolyn, you said that you didn't want to do X, Y, and Z, and yet now you're kind of doing it. Like, what, what changed? Did something change? Are you being intentional? Um, and, and I just love, I love those folks. They're, you know, good people. Authors at Wharton. So there's, um, this is actually a short-term opportunity, but there's all like a longer-term, mid-range uh, um, kind of role in terms of helping to figure out who the speakers will be. So, Anyone at any point in time can attend the gajillions of leadership workshops where Wharton has amazing alums, amazing experts come and speak. Sometimes you get a free book um, and they're, um, you know, emceed by Adam Grant. He has such interesting questions. They're great learning opportunities, but you can also be on the Authors of Wharton committee that works with Professor Grant to think about what speakers are going to be brought to campus and what they're gonna talk about and what kind of questions are worthy of the MBA audience. So that's the student committee. Leadership expeditions and intensive. Again, this is the mid range. So we're looking at like things that might be like a week. So for example, you could take a spring break and instead of going off and just, you know, relaxing, you could say, you know, I wanna, I wanna have some leadership. And I say, usually going somewhere that you're gonna be hot, tired and hungry and sore or cold, tired, hungry and sore. So these are beautiful parts of the world, but intense parts of the world. You know, you might go hiking in Patagonia. You might go tall ship sailing off the coast of New Zealand. That sounds exotic, but when you're on a ship for a week trying to figure out how to sail and you've never sailed before, it can actually be pretty intense. And this deepens your leadership in terms of mission critical awareness. So if you've always wondered, how do you handle crisis? 
these are the experiences for you. When you are at your rope's end, when you are tired and hot and sore, and you might have some injuries and you've got to hike another 50 days and it's, or 50 miles and it's your job to lead for the day. And you've got other people on the team who have injuries and they're all looking at you saying, okay, how are we going to get from A to B? You learn a lot about yourself in that process and you get feedback from them because that's part of the program It's woven in, um, in terms of the end of the day, looking back and saying, how did we do? What did the leader do? or not do that could have kept the team going and getting us where we need to be. So this time, obviously from the global pandemic, we're a little bit like not sure what that's gonna look like, but the Wharton Leadership Venture team is extremely good and has amazing partners. And so they're already brainstorming and are reaching out and forming partnerships so that we're very hopeful as soon as we get kind of the travel restrictions lifted, they'll be able to open up and you can sign up for these. Okay, now we're switching to the, oh yeah, awesome, please ask a question. I had a quick question about the leadership expedition and intensives. That yeah. sounds absolutely amazing. You mentioned that they're available during spring break. Are they available at any other time? Like oh, if yeah. we were to graduate, can we come back? So I don't think they're available after you graduate. That's typically not the rule. I know that there's been allowances made for the last two graduating classes because Due to the pandemic, people couldn't travel, so they didn't get the opportunity. So there's some allowances being made for those folks. And I would imagine that if you guys similarly had any restraints, that might be similarly um, managed. But my assumption right now, and it looks like this will come back. And yes, there's definitely other weeks. There's opportunity weeks at Wharton that are particular times where at least Wharton doesn't have classes. If you take electives outside of Wharton, you may still have classes and not be able to travel too far but there are times specifically for um, these kind of expeditions. There are also global modular courses, there's um, global intensive courses. So there's many periods in Wharton winter break, there's travel um, opportunities with ventures. And there's also some ventures um, that are called intensives that are actually shorter term too, like a weekend to go train with the fire department of New York or go down to Quantico um, and train with the Marine Corps. Does that answer your question, Lydia? That does. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. One one other quick question here about that. Um, is it partnered with Knowles by any chance, or based on Knowles is, I think, one of the partners. But there's okay. but it's many that are kind of in that similar vein. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Great question. Okay. So then, when we were moving kind of into the, the longer term, like doubling down on leadership experiences now. So these are multi-semester, they're focused on action, reflection, training, community kind of woven in. And there's also, it's fair to make you guys aware that there's a one student, one fellowship rule within McNulty, where in order to create many as many opportunities for different students to, um, to test their leadership skills, um, if you are, you know, you can apply for as many as you want, but once you've accepted, you can only accept one fellowship. This was based on feedback from students because Back in my day, some folks would get, you know, apply and get into two fellowships and it kind of felt unfair because there's not enough fellowships for everybody in the class. So this is a way to expand opportunity. So the Venture Fellows Program is tied to those ventures we just spoke about. Those are folks who are then trained in environmental awareness, safety, and working in partnership with folks like at Knowles, um, kind of make sure that the team going through a venture um, gets the most out of their learning experience. So the Venture Fellows is really focused on um, supporting those leadership ventures. The Lippman Family Prize Fellows Program. This is a great one if you have a goal in leadership um, around like um, public speaking or leadership presence. And it also ties to kind of deepening your knowledge of best practices in nonprofits. So if you really care about social impact, this is an awesome fellowship to consider and is actually one of the first that becomes available. So this one you actually can do as a first year, the other is ones you cannot. This one um, you would apply, I think it's, you can apply as early as you know September of arriving at Wharton and it's actually cross pen. So you may be students who are not necessarily getting their master's in business degree. Um, and you're reading applications and understanding um, the 
kind of value proposition of all of these nonprofits who applied for a prize and the fellows actually winnow down that pool and then are pitching to the folks who have the purse of which nonprofit they think should win. So it's really great for negotiation skills, for leadership presence, for pitching, um, as well as being able to discern what makes a nonprofit scalable and really effective. Um, it's a really powerful experience. You can do this both in your first year and your second year. So this is kind of a little bit different than the, than the venture fellows or the next one I'm gonna talk about, nonprofit board fellows. Nonprofit board fellows similarly focused on civic engagement, um, but this is an opportunity where you would um, go through some training about nonprofit governance and actually have a non-voting seat on the board of a Philadelphia nonprofit. And it is a really interesting place if you've got a leadership goal around understanding power dynamics and influence and negotiation and how do you drive mission through an organization um, with many different personalities at the table. Um, and so it's interesting because you don't have a board vote. So how you have to get creative and think about how you work in that space when you really don't have authority, but you may have an idea of where things could go, should go. And it's less impact focused than it is about you learning and seeing and observing and then reflecting with a partner who's assigned to the same board and you might have different projects. How do we get this work done? How do we convince these folks this is the right path um, without that authority? What are we seeing? How are people moving in this space? Who has power? Who doesn't? Where is that locus of control? And how can you influence and inform it? It's, it's really interesting. And also just nonprofit governance. You know, well, How does one govern an organization and witnessing that front and center? And then the last fellowship within the McNulty Leadership Program is the William P. Lauder Leadership Fellows Program. This is actually the program that I run and is very close to my heart because I was a leadership fellow myself. So leadership fellows are really focused on building teams. So when I talked about the learning team experience way back at the beginning of this presentation that every Wharton student goes through, the second year students who are in charge of all the learning teams um, are leadership fellows and they actually run the learning team experience and help those learning teams form and then also support management 610 as well as developing culture and, um, and leadership development and learning over the life of your first year. So you've got second year students that can serve as mentors, coaches, they facilitate 360 debriefs, like after your learning team has finished a great milestone, they'll be the ones that hold the space and help facilitate you giving feedback to your teammates about what worked and what didn't, what you wanna try next time. So this is a really great kind of tie through in terms of managing a team. Question on the the Lauder Fellowship. Uh, yeah. Is that tied to the the MA um, Lauder program at all? No, it's not. Great question. Not at all. Different Lauder. So that the Lauder um, Institute and the, the the dual degree with um, the Lauder School is totally separate. That's um, William's father. This is um, William's program, and William also teaches a class at Wharton. Um, but this is this fellowship. You do not have to be uh, in the Lauder Institute. You have, have no connections whatsoever. It's, it's completely independent. Okay, thank you. So again, leadership development journey, this is where we hope to bring you here at the Wharton School through that assessing, developing, reflecting and applying um, and just continuing to intentionally adapt. That's our goal for you. Um, if you want to grab a screenshot, this is a handy dandy little cheat sheet reference of just pretty much what I went through. Um, you guys have a lot of time and are thinking about things. Um, so if you have questions, um, let me just jump. Let's see, these are the ways to stay connected. And I'll just say um, that as Jen mentioned at the beginning, this is the third in the series about the advising support network. There are a number of advisors within the leadership program who support the ASN, who are advisors who can meet with you one-on-one -on -one or be your connections. If you have, say, if you were meeting with me and you really wanted to talk about ventures, I could connect you with the right person so that you could learn more about that particular program. So there's leadership advisors, but we're within this context of your advising support network. And the last in the series, um, we invite you to join us at lunch for, on May 26th to hear about your academic advisors. 
And then finally, stay connected. If you've got questions, um, these are great resources and places to turn. But I'd also like to open it up now to see if there's um, any questions before we wrap up. We'll take a look in the chat as well. Oh, I love the conversations about inclusive leadership, communication. Yes, appreciation and appreciation, appreciative inquiry is so empowering. Um, and so interesting too, right? Like that like constructive tension between appreciative inquiry and then accountability. And how does a leader walk that in a way um, that gets the, gets the work done? Emily, go ahead with your question. Thank you for a great session, Gwendolyn. Um, my name is Emily. I currently work in data analytics um, in International Finance Corporation, but I'm hoping to, um, to pivot um, to a role that's more an investment advisory um, in underserved markets. And so I think, you know, a lot of the leadership um, programs that you've mentioned, um, I, I'm kind of connecting to, to what I potentially want to do. But um, one question I did have was around um, how do you focus here at Wharton specifically on developing international leaders and multicultural leaders? Um, how do you help your students flex that muscle? Oh my gosh, that is like an amazing question because I think it's something we're grappling with right now. Like right before this session, yeah. <laughs> the McNulty Leadership Program, we were just having an all staff meeting mandatory workshop. I mean, mandatory, we're all like really excited about it. Um, yeah. Where we're going through and thinking about our strategy and how both we show up inclusively within our staff cells and look at especially diversity and inclusion and how we make that actionable for students. And we're looking at both the personal, the interpersonal and the structural. Aside from that, I would say um, there's certainly workshops that are related to that kind of content. Um, I would say outside of McNulty Leadership, I know the Office of Student Life does programming um, around identity and diversity, equity and inclusion and they have a con conversations that matter program. Um, and then within the fellowships, for example, I make sure that there's trainings related to that kind of content that's evidence-based for the fellows, especially since they play such a role in onboarding first year class as they arrive. Um, and then there's all kinds of organizations and clubs that kind of look at that content. But I would say that it's very much an emerging, like we're very much on the pulse of like the world, right? Like we're waking right. up to like, oh yeah, we need to be paying attention to this. How does that need to look? Um, and I'm on the diversity equity, sorry, diversity and inclusion steering committee for staff. And we're looking specifically at preterm, for example, of making sure that there's programming that is available to everyone as they move through the onboarding. It's not just a piecemeal approach that there's a thread right. that is woven through. But if you have suggestions or ideas of things you've seen done well, I would love to hear them. Fantastic. Thank you for clarifying. Um, so you're, you're almost trying to combine the diversity piece and then like thread it into the leadership programs. Um, exactly, so. and so I think that, you know, it's it's easily done as like a, a side thing, but that's yeah. that defeats the purpose. It needs to be right. core right. to your operations. Otherwise it's literally sidelined. I think that's, right. that's kind of what we're all realizing now. Like it's been in this little right. pocket, we assigned a couple people to do it and then we're realizing that model doesn't work. Right, how do you get it like mainstream? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you, and Sharina, go ahead. Hi, Gwendolyn, thank you so much for your time. My name is Sharina, I'm currently an associate consultant on externship at CIPTC, which is a network of charter schools. So really interested in some of the fellowship programs that you mentioned, both on the nonprofit and leadership side. For me, I'd love to learn more about how you see this program and its components evolving over the next few years, as I think about applying um, and over the long term. Do you mean specifically the nonprofit board fellows or the Lippman Prize? Which one? Just you? in terms of the McNulty Leadership Program and the various components. So, from what we understand, there's the fellowship programs, there's the class component, but and the experiential learning and how those components might evolve or grow over time. Gotcha. Um, so I think that you know, it's such an interesting question about like overarching strategy. We have a strategy task force and I have not heard their report out yet. So I don't want to get too ahead of them. So I'll put on my like personal hat. Um, and I think personally, I'm really excited for us to look more at the intersection 
and opportunities to integrate as rather than doing things in silos, think about how can we weave coaching into the experience that say nonprofit board fellows go through. Um, previously, there was only one fellow assigned to one board. We had a change this year. We now have two that will be paired together and also work with peer coaching. So they can kind of be trained by an executive coach and how to coach one another within that board context that only they are seeing of like, listen, I have this project. Here's who I thought in the board I was going to, you know, socialize the idea with and they would buy in. It didn't work. I, you know, help me think through what, what would be persuading? Let's draw out a map of social connections within this board and think about, you know, is it authority? Do I need to bring more evidence to the table? Like how can I do influence and work with each other in that way? So that would be weaving in the executive coaching with the fellowship that's existing. Um, and I feel like there's more opportunities to do that. Like how do you bring your assessments into thinking about, um, academics and thinking about like, okay, like, do I share those with my learning team? Do I share those in the context of a class? Like right now, it's your results. You're under no obligation to share them with anyone. We maybe structure that a little bit more and help people have those conversations where you say, you know what? I scored really low on conscientiousness. How do you tell a teammate that? How do you tell your team like, yeah, I'm going to need someone to like you know, make sure I'm paying attention to when deadlines are because left to my own devices, I'm going to do it my way and I'm not going to be thinking about this group. Um, and so I feel like that those that integration is someplace that I feel like there's a lot of room to grow and play because in the end, we've seen the last year, right? Like the, the lines between personal and professional are all blurred. And to me, that is just so true. Like it's always bothered me when people are like, oh, don't take it personally. It's just business. I'm like, there is one me. And if you treat me one way because we're in a business setting, like, what does that say about you? That's kind of weird, right? Like, you want to be able to bring your values and your whole self to everything you do. And that's why we need to start looking at things more inclusively, not just the people, but also the content. Yeah, I love that. Rather than thinking of the different compartments, we're all one person bringing into the various factors of the program and thinking about the incentives of individuals in order to align them to what you're hoping to achieve in them. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and it's hard so work, much. right? Because everyone has yeah. so many different perspectives, but like that's what is both beautiful and challenging. And, but the challenge of like, we have, we have this opportunity to like look at those challenges and figure out how to make it work um, in the way that like, we're gonna have better ideas if it's not just, you know, 10 Gwendolyn's in a room thinking of the same thing, but someone else that I really disagree with, and I've got to figure out how to make my point or realize, hey, the pie isn't little. There's a lot more room for different people to fit into this picture and that'll move us forward. And not only that you disagree, but why? Yeah, yep. Yes, unpacking it. Yeah, <laughs> and having that language. Thank you, great question. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to like even think it through myself. Will you teach me how to say your name, the person who had their hand up next? Uh, Sun Wan. Sun Wan. What's your question? Awesome, yeah. Uh, thank you for a great session, both Gwendolyn and Jen. Um, also, thank you guys for going slightly over to answer my question. Um, but so to quickly introduce myself, uh, I'm a consultant from San Francisco, hoping to leverage my MBA to hopefully become a better, more inclusive uh, people manager. Um, and therefore, you know, the fellowship program is definitely also something that really speaks to me. And you mentioned earlier that students really only have the opportunity to do one fellowship throughout their time at Wharton. But you also mentioned that the Lippman Family Prize in particular is open to first years. So my question is a little bit more tactical. Do students have the opportunity to pursue that fellowship their first year and then maybe something else their second year? Or is that option closed? The option is closed within McNulty. So one of the weird things, I don't know why we don't think of a different word for this. We just use the word fellowship all the time. So there's financial fellowships. So some, you know, if you like, you know, apply for financial aid, some folks will get fellowships and that's totally separate from the McNulty fellowships. There's McNulty fellowships. So for those four, yeah, you can only do one. If you did the Lipman in your first year, you would not be able to do any of the three your second year. But then there's still more fellowships outside of McNulty. And so that'd be a great question. If you've gone to some of the other sessions, you can hear about career fellows, student life fellows, um, admissions fellows. 
um, communications fellows. There's many opportunities that put you in a leadership environment and an opportunity to lead your peers. And that's a great place where you could do that concurrently with some of our mid-range programs, like doing a leadership opportunity, like running a WGA club, for example, or being a student life fellow at the same time as you're doing workshops to support you um, in your learning journey. So you could take some of that content and immediately put it to use as a student life fellow, for example. Does that kind of answer your question a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it does. But within McNulty, it sounds like even if we do the Lippman Family Prize Fellowship uh, afterwards, there, there aren't really opportunities to do follow-on fellowships. Yep, yeah. We keep track, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries you can at do all. That, but, and apply to other programs outside. So you could definitely do Lippman Prize and then like Student Life Fellows um, or Student Life Fellows and Admissions Fellows. And, you know, there's different combinations you can do of, you know, you could you could hold three fellowships, just only one of them could be with McNulty. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you very much. No problem. Next up, Mark. Hi, Gwendolyn. Uh, thanks for your time today. Um, you mentioned earlier something about conversations that matter. I was hoping you could tell us a bit more about that. Is that similar to Wharton's Storytellers group and program? And yeah, I'm just hoping to hear more about it. Thank you. So one of the kind of interesting things about Wharton is that there's the WGA, which is the Wharton Graduate Association. You may remember in undergrad, there was like a student union kind of thing or graduate group or undergraduate, like kind of this weird, like what was that? Here at Wharton, it is a totally different, huge, big deal. Whereas it may have just been like in the back of your mind, like that's something graduate students in my undergrad did. You weren't really aware of it. Here, the WGA is like, it's a separate nonprofit and there are so many clubs, like anything you could think of doing at Wharton, someone has a club for it, or you could start that club. Um, and so there's all of these opportunities with clubs. Um, and so storytellers is one of them. And so they host events and provide the opportunity often with themes of different events you can go to. Um, and they're amazing. And people come and hear the folks who have been preparing and are delivering the particular stories for that event. So that's Storytellers Club. Conversations That Matter is different. That is a kind of dedicated program that the Office of Student Life runs where there are facilitators that are kind of trained in starting to um, kind of holding space for conversations that are a little bit tricky, right? About race and identity and differences. And it's going through with a small group and a facilitator, some of those conversations and getting to, it's very similar to P3 in that way, um, but it's focused around kind of identity and areas of diversity. There's other parts of the universe. I know McNulty leadership kind of going back to Emily's question that we're looking at incorporating that kind of learning within the McNulty leadership. Right now, the conversations with Matt that matter program is out of student life because they really focus on the um, kind of identity piece of it. And that's one of the first things that they'll do with Wharton students in, in the onboarding time and preterm is to um, go through an exercise around identity and, and look at kind of how do you define yourself and that illuminates then what lenses are you looking at others through. Okay, thanks very much. That was helpful. No problem. Jen, I know we're over time. How are we doing? Do we need to like, are we fitting out beyond, we're blowing up the, the, the structure. I don't know if you had another meeting to get to. No, it's fine. If there's more questions, that's fine. But I will say, I already dropped in the chat. If people do have follow-up questions, I shared the main admissions inbox. Uh, you are more than welcome to send our team some questions and we will take care of those. We also have ways that you can connect with our current students through the admissions fellow program. So I do wanna make sure everyone knows that if you were not able to get your questions answered during this session today, or if additional questions come up, you can certainly reach out to us and we will take care of those questions. And Jen runs the admissions fellows team and they are incredible. Like if you have questions about what it's like really like, you know, I'm giving you my sense,